Hey guys and welcome to Aussie Reviews. Today I'm going to run through tips and talk about in general responsible shooting. Now this is extremely important because unfortunately we get tainted with the same brush if one of us do something irresponsible or stupid when we're out shooting. So it's up to all of us in my view to act responsibly and in this video I'm going to run through some of the top tips that I have always abided by and myself as a primary producer ask of anyone who comes onto my property and shoots. So here they are. When initially talking to a farmer, make sure that you tell them that you have liability insurance to cover you while shooting on their property, such as the Shooters Union membership card. On the back, you can clearly see that it has up to $10 million of liability cover. That certainly puts a farmer's mind at ease if they are going to allow you to shoot on their property. Always tell the farmer what calibres you intend on using and ask if it's okay to use certain calibres. For example, some farmers won't even want you to use anything over a 223. So make sure you always clear it with them first to make sure that that caliber can be used on their property. Talk to the farmer about what house pets that they have. A lot of the time you'll have a uh, farm cat and it wanders around of a night time. So the last thing you wanna do is shoot that cat. Or if they've got dogs, make sure you know what those dogs look like so that you don't get them confused with wild dogs. Speak to the farmer about what feral animals they want you to take if you do come across them. Some farmers may not want uh, certain animals dispatched for whatever reason, so make sure there's clear understanding of what you can and can't shoot. Be aware of livestock and native animals that have been attacked by feral pests like wild dogs. For example, this wallaby here, you can see it's had its ear clearly ripped off. It's got bite marks over it and a classic example of what wild dogs do is they rip the stomach open and clean out the stomach that's what they eat make sure you tell the farmer where on the property this has happened and how old that you believe that it is or take some photos and that way the property owner gets a rough idea and can map out the frequency of wild dog attacks when you're going through gates make sure you close the gate if it's already closed if it's open, make sure you leave the gate open because it may be open so that cattle can access water. If you spot any broken or down fencing, see if you can temporarily fix it and let the farmer know exactly where it is on the property so that it can be looked at later on. When shooting, always make sure you know what's on the other side of a hill and that you're not shooting towards a shed or a house or towards any livestock. That's really important. The last thing you wanna do is knock down some livestock or send around through the farmer's shed wall. Always know what livestock are present and roughly where they are on the property. So you make sure that when you do take a shot at something, there is never any livestock in the background there where a ricochet or a bullet could hit them. Don't shoot into hills where there's numerous rocks. Bullets obviously ricochet off rocks and you want to minimise that as much as possible. So always take a shot when you've got that suitable backstop available. When shooting, make sure you pick up all your shells. It doesn't matter whether they're rim fire or centre fire. There's nothing worse than walking around your own property after you've let shooters on and there's shells left everywhere. So make sure you pick them up. And make sure that no drink bottles or any other litter have fallen off your ute or make sure you don't throw the stuff on the ground. It doesn't matter how big the property is or how small it is, farmers hate seeing litter left everywhere. So make sure you clean up after yourself. If you need to go to the toilet, make sure that you bring a shovel with you so you can dig a hole. The last thing that you wanna do is just crap on the ground and leave your dirty toilet paper there to blow over the property. All right guys, I hope you really enjoyed that video. For some people it may just be the absolute basics, but a lot of people aren't aware or don't even think of just the little things that can mean the difference between you being not invited back to a property or being invited back with uh, open arms. So I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Let me know what you think in the comments below and we'll catch you on the next review.